Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a coiled paracord lanyard. This style of a lanyard is very practical because it is compact, but it is able to stretch when we need additional length. This design has been around for quite a while and I'm certainly not the first one to demonstrate how to make one. In this video, I wanted to share my tips and tricks on making one and help you get to the finishing point which is to make a coiled paracord lanyard of your own. Now with that said, let's take a look at one, then make one. Here you can see a couple of examples of this style of a lanyard. The whole point of this design is that the lanyard itself is fairly compact, but when you need additional length for your lanyard, you are able to stretch it out and get additional range of motion for your lanyard. As such, items attached aren't restricted by the length of the lanyard. In practice, this lanyard is very useful for keeping small items safe. So for small items, such as keys, pocket knives, flashlights, whistles, small items that you want to keep around and you need an extended range of motion to use. Now let's take a look at the supplies. In the supplies section, I have covered the most important supplies that you're going to need to make this lanyard. There are certain tools that you're going to also want, but they're not mandatory for making this lanyard. I cover these tools when I'm actually making the lanyard. The first supply that we're going to need is going to be Paracord 550. Paracord? is going to be used to dress up the core of our lanyard. Now how much paracord do you need? It depends completely on the length of the lanyard that you want. Coiling the paracord as well as the core makes the lanyard very compact. For example, this lanyard used up about 4 feet of paracord and it stretches up to about two to two and a half feet when fully extended. Now, to prepare our paracord, we're going to first gut it by removing the inner strands. The next supply that we're going to need is going to be weed trimmer line. Such a line can be found in home and garden style shops and departments. The diameter of the line should be small enough for the line to fit into a gutted piece of paracord. So, usually up to about 3 mm. Now, these lines come in a variety of shapes. You have hexagonal ones, you have square ones. I recommend getting a simple round weed trimmer line. You're also going to need some sort of a dowel rod. The dowel rod is going to be used to coil up our lanyard. Now, you can get dowel rods in a variety of different sizes. The smaller the size, the more compact your lanyard is going to be. On the other hand, it's also going to be a bit harder to coil. Another important supply is going to be the hardware that we use to attach our lanyard onto various objects. You can use small rings, big rings, snap hooks, rope shackles, carabiners, whatever you prefer. Another supply that you're going to need is going to be something to finish the ends of your lanyard. For example, here I used Two pieces of 550 paracord, which I gutted and used to secure the ends of the lanyard. Here I used microcord to do a common whipping on both sides. You could also use a variety of other techniques to finish. You could also use heat shrink tubing, which is used for work with electricity. 
Finally, you're going to need a knife or a pair of scissors to cut the cords with, as well as a lighter. With these supplies ready, let's begin. To start my lanyard, I'm going to pick up the piece of paracord which I have gutted earlier. I'm going to place a piece of weed trimmer line next to it and measure out the same length. Then I'm going to cut the line. You will want your cut to be at a right angle so it isn't sharp. If it's going to be sharp, it's going to stick in your paracord. The next step is going to be to feed the weed trimmer line into the paracord. Once I get a small section into the paracord, I will usually melt up the end of my paracord. Just to prevent it from fraying. Then continue pushing in the weed trimmer line until you have used it all up. After dressing my weed trimmer line in paracord, it's ready to be coiled. The usual setup that I use is to place a dowel rod into a vise, also called a grip. The vise holds the dowel rod and prevents it from moving. This helps me coil up the weed trimmer line much more easily. Now, if you don't have a vise available, you can also hold the dowel rod in your other hand. But this is harder to do, so I highly recommend using a vise. Now, before we can begin coiling, we need to attach the weed trimmer line as well as paracord onto the dowel rod. Now, for this task, I have used a variety of different techniques. I think the easiest way is to use some duct tape and attach by just wrapping around. You can also use a whipping, you can use a couple of constrictor knots or any other way. I mostly gave up on the before mentioned methods and I just use a simple binding. I take a smaller piece of cordage and fold it in half. Then I place it over my piece of paracord. Like this. Then I come under and up around the end. Then I cross my two strands. And tighten up. Then I come around. Like this. Then grab both of my strands and simply tightly wrap around. Now this is not the most elegant of ways, but it is fast and it works just fine. As long as you do your wrap around tightly, you should have no issues with the end moving. So simply wrap around in any way that you would like. In the end, all I do is I tie the two ends together somehow. And with this I have secured the end. Again, it's not the best looking way, but as long as it works, well, it works. So, after doing this monster of a binding, 
I'm going to continue by coiling. I first ready up another piece of cordage so that I can wrap around the other end at the other side of the lanyard. Then I'm going to begin wrapping around. You will want your wraparounds to be very tight. Simply continue wrapping around until you have used up all of your weed trimmer line. On the other side, you again have to bind the end. It is super useful if you have some sort of a clamp to clamp down the end while you're working. In any case though, I'm going to take another piece of cordage and fold it in half. I'm going to place it over the end, like this. Then I'm going to cross the two strands at the top of the end and come around again. Cross the two strands again. Come around again. And at this point, the end is no longer moving. I can now double up the ends and just do a few wraparounds more, just to use up the cordage. Again, this looks messy, but for me, as long as it works, that's all I need. Then, simply tie down the two ends somehow. It's now time to drop the coil into some boiling water. I'm going to boil it 10 maybe 20 minutes. After boiling our coil for 10 to 20 minutes, we're going to take it out of the water and place it into some cold water. After that, we're going to dry it out, then continue our lanyard. After letting the lanyard dry, we remove it from the dowel rod. Now at this point, the lanyard or the coil is fairly loose. Now you can use it like this, or you can reverse the coil, which is going to give it much more of a snap. Reversing the coil takes a bit of getting used to. You can play around with it a little bit and you're going to figure it out by yourself. The easiest way that I can explain it is that you grab the coil and you see in which direction it is coiling to. So this one is coiling counterclockwise or to the left. So I'm going to grab the end and I'm going to rotate the rest of my lanyard counterclockwise or to the left as well. So this is what happens. I just keep coiling. And you can see that my coil is getting tighter on the left side.
So like this. With this we have made a lot more of a compact coil. To install the two rings, I'm going to clean up the ends a little bit. I'm going to remove my weed trimmer line out of the lanyard a little bit. Then clip it off. Now this should give me a bit of paracord that I can fold over the ring. Like this, to hold it in place. Now I can use some heat shrink wrap or a whipping or even just the Solomon bar technique to go over here and secure it. I'm going to finish the lanyard using a common whipping. I grab my coil, I grab a ring and I place the end of my coil through the ring. Then I fold the end over itself to capture the ring. So like this. And I'm now going to take a small piece of cordage. In my case I'm going to be using microcord. I'm going to fold one end into a bite. So I simply fold it a little bit. Then I take the bite and I place it over the end. Like this. Then with the long end I'm going to start wrapping around from the right side towards the left side. And I wrap around the entire end. Once I am happy with the number of wraps, I take my working end, so the cord that I used to do the wrap arounds, and I travel under and through the loop on the left. Then, using the right end, I pull in the loop as well as the left end under the wraps to about the center of my wraps. So about to the middle point. Like this. Then pull on both of the ends in order to secure the whipping. After finishing both of the ends, our lanyard is complete. It will help us keep things around and prevent us from losing them. Guys, thank you very much for joining me in this tutorial. I hope that it wasn't too hard and that you were able to complete this project. Thank you and see you next time.